Hey guys, it's Katie from Paranormal Activity. Hey everybody, it's Jason from Ghost Hunters. What's up everybody? It is Nick. Hey, what's up? This is Josh from Expedition Unknown. Hey everyone, this is Elizabeth Saint, and you're listening to Beyond Normal Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Due to the graphic nature of this program, content recommendation is for 18 and older. Listener discretion is advised. All right, all you paranormal lovers, it's time to talk about ghosts, UFOs, and everything in between with Wisconsin's very own Paranormal Shop Doc. Broadcasting live from coast to coast and worldwide, please welcome your friends and mine, the Beyond Normal Radio Show. Good evening, America. What is going on out there? Paranation. All you beautiful, beautiful people from the east of the Rockies to the western seaboards and everywhere in between. This is the Beyond Home Radio Show. I am one of your hosts, Chris. Accompany me, my co-pilot here, Courtney. Hello. How are you, dear? Doing all right. We've had an exciting week. It's it has been. It has. So we've done some hanging out, and uh, it's it's a get to know your co host week. So <laughs> we decided to go to uh, see some bands. We've ventured to Chicago, ventured to Milwaukee, and I even tried sushi for the first time. I feel like it's fitting to mention the band you saw in Chicago. Yes. Which was? Ghost. Perfect. Yes. Uh, Ghost was great. If you not have ever not seen them, wonderful band, I must say. Uh, we also got to see Godsmack and Stained and Mixmaster Mike from the Beastie Boys. That's right. <laughs> so it was fun. We had a great, great week uh, together doing a couple shows and hanging out and uh, all the good stuff. So... As always, uh, Courtney and I are both from the Westosha Paranormal Society, located in southeast Wisconsin, and you can check us out on our Facebook page, Beyond Normal Radio, and our group, the Westosha Paranormal Society as well. So, this evening, tonight, we had gathered some of our favorite campfire ghost stories that we had found, and we would like to tell a tale of these spectacular spectral sightings that we had gathered for this evening. And uh, what better way? It's a beautiful, beautiful night here in our studio. And we've got the we got the main door opened up with the screen door. We got a nice breeze coming in. It's probably uh, about 69 degrees outside, Feels 68. autumnish tonight. Yeah. It's great. It's really, really great. So... We're going to get into it here. Uh, we got some stories, some wonderful campfire stories. And uh, the titles this evening are going to be It Wasn't a Little Girl, The Unrest Stop, those spooky lot lizards out there, you know. <laughs> They're like, hey. Perfect any- timing before our road trip. <laughs> got, got any room in the back? <laughs> These dentures come right out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It came for us in the graveyard. And of course, last but not least, evicted by a ghost. That's right. Somebody wasn't paying their rent. The landlord who died came back and said, Mm-mm, get out. So, speaking of uh, vacation fun, I did see a story about an airliner recently that plummeted 15,000 feet. Mm. Yeah, it makes another me another reason for you to not get on a plane. Yes, you were correct. Yeah, well. you were correct, madam. Hell no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, it wasn't a little girl. 
As the story goes, I was camping with my husband and his family at a small remote lake in New Mexico. There were ten people, roughly, in our group, and another group of six people in the next. It was a nighttime... It was nighttime, and both groups were doing typical activities, making s'mores, having a few drinks, and telling stories. When we all heard what sounded like a little girl yelling for help, neither group had children with them. Zero. Zilch. None. But we were all positive we were hearing a little girl and decided to search the area. We heard the noises all together. Everybody in both campsites. There was a field behind our campsite and we all saw a very tall, pure white figure standing maybe a hundred feet away from us in a field making those noises. We all agreed this thing looked maybe six feet tall, skinny, white. We made our way closer to investigate, but whatever it was that we saw started backing off as we got closer, and it disappeared into the tree line. All night we continued to hear a little girl calling for help as we tried to sleep. That sounds really creepy. That would creep the hell out of me. Just That's the end that. of the story? That's the end of the story there. It's always interesting when multiple people are having the same experience. Kind of like the those body cam of that upside down vehicle we see, remember, where mm-hmm. the mom was dead but the baby was still alive yeah. and she was saying All the me. paramedics heard her calling right. for help and she was 16 hours deceased. Yeah. it's it's in, And it was caught on body cam too. That's the creepiest thing. It really is. Ready for the next one? The unrest. Stop. The unrest stop. I was driving across the country with my mom and sister when I was 16 and my sister was 20. It was late, but we were well rested, still and alert. We were driving along an interstate and needed gas and a bathroom break. So we stopped at the only rest stop for 200 miles. There was a van full of teenagers on a road trip at the gas station as well, as as well as a small gray car parked at the pump in front of us with two young men standing still outside of it. When we got there, everything just felt wrong. We'd been on the road for days and seen many rest stops at night, and I had never been afraid until then. My mom and sister went inside, and I stayed in the car. I heard the teenagers say they were creeped out and couldn't get the pump to work, and then they left in a hurry. I was watching the car in front of us, and the two men had not moved at all, not even an inch. They weren't talking. They weren't on their phones. They were just standing there, still as stone. My sister and mom came running back out to the car, and when they got in, The two men slowly turned to look at us while not moving or pivoting the rest of their bodies. And I swear to fucking shit, we all saw the same thing. They had eyes dark as pitch and empty. Truly empty. Not black. Not reflecting any light at all. Just a void. We sped out of there and didn't stop until we were in the next city. The worst thing about the entire experience, we couldn't find the place on any map. We knew exactly which spot on the interstate to look, and we couldn't find it on Google Maps or a paper map or anything. We even asked locals about the creepy gas station out on that stretch of road, and all we got were confused looks. We're traveled, we've traveled that interstate since, and there's no rest stop. That is creepy. That is creepy. Could you imagine that? Just, oh. The whole thing was what? An illusion? Yeah. A mirage of some kind? Or just, I mean, there, An there has been. experience? Maybe. A shift portal? I don't know. Time shift? It's not just that they saw these creatures, an right. entire rest stop. Yeah. With Everything. other passerbys. Yeah. 
Hmm. It came for us in the graveyard. We were driving my friend's really old, beat-up Subaru through a massive graveyard. Subi. Subi. We stopped and walked down a hill and came across a little pond. There was someone sitting on a rock and another one on the other side of the pond. The figure was all black, and we couldn't make out any features other than the fact that it looked like a man. It looked like a man who was wearing some old-style top hat. We stupidly waved and shouted, Hi. He didn't show any acknowledgement, must be from Illinois, and continued (laughs) sitting still on the rock. We love all you Illinois people, by the way. All of a sudden, Court and I are also from there, too. (laughs) Originally. Originally. We don't claim it anymore. No, no. He jumped to his feet, started running to us on the water, and then vanished into thin air halfway through the pond. The car wouldn't start as we ran back, freaking out. We had heard something banging on the back of the car. But every few seconds or so, we'd hear it. Nobody was outside. There was nobody there. It was dark. But something was making a noise on the car. I opened my phone and started dialing my mom to come get us. The next 30 minutes were spent trying to get her car started as well when she arrived. No banging was heard afterwards, but we felt this heavy pressure around us. Finally, the car started, and she hit the pedal to the metal. We sped out of the graveyard so fast, immediately crossing the gates, all of our phones regained cell service. Once, once I know for certain is that someone or something was out there, and it was not an animal or a human. Evicted by a ghost. Shortly after college, I got married. We immediately moved into a basement apartment because that's all that was available within our budget. This place had a poltergeist and my wife was terrified. Whatever resided there with us made it clear it wanted to live alone. Dishes, glasses, and other items would fly off the shelf. My wife was hit several times. There was always an ominous feeling like we were being watched. At night when we walked through the apartment in the dark, there would be insanely bright flashes of light that would illuminate the entire room. One night while we were going to bed, as soon as my wife and I walked into the bedroom, we heard a voice from nowhere say, My name, move. My wife looked at me. I looked at her. I said loudly, You got it, bud. We moved out two days later and stayed with family. The old lady who owned the place died a few months later and the house was torn down. It is still an empty lot to this day. Nothing but grass and a tree. I still drive by every now and again. That is creepy, too. Yeah. Especially when a ghost tells you to leave. Get yeah. out. We'd, Would we'd, you? Would you go? No. No. Me neither. I'm, I'm staying my ground. Right. That's it. Fight or flight. Yeah. 100%. There's, there's no way that... A a, a spooky, spooktacular spectral is going to be like, Courtney, move. Like, to the left or to the right? Like, because I'm not fucking moving. Like, I'm not leaving my house. I just put down 10 Gs, you know, okay? Like, no, sorry, not happening. So that, my friends, is our... Campfire ghost story. That's right. And of course, today's podcast is brought to you by our dear friends from the Elemental Society of the Paranormal. You can check them out on Facebook. They are our friends. Alia is a good friend of the show. Known her for many, many years. She's a fellow paranormal investigator from the area. And we just want to give them out a shout out. So the Elemental Society of the Paranormal. Check them out. So, until next time, Courtney. Until next time, Chris. We'll see you guys later on the Beyond Normal Radio Show. Have a great night. You've been listening to Beyond Normal Radio Show. We would like to thank our partners, radio affiliates, the staff at WBNR, and our listeners. Don't forget to like them on Facebook. And remember, it's not just paranormal, it's 